Welcome to a new guide on this channel, and on this occasion is the Mother 32 patch panel. This is not a review, it's a complete deep dive guide about the ins and outs of this device. Everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. And if you like this, please like and subscribe, and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can, everything is at the description. Okay, so this deep dive is about the ins and the outs of the synthesizer, and I'm talking about this section. To really learn the patch bay and all the ins and outs, you really need to know how everything else works. So check the links, uh, the description or the cards because I've already made a video about this. If you take a look at right here, you have inputs and outputs. The ones with the label, the, the, the white, you know, background are outs and the other ones are ins. And right there below, you know, at the bottom, you have rounded ones. Well, this one, they got to do with the sequencer. Okay, so let's talk about the first outs that we have available and we are going to be doing something like this. We're going to start easy and we're going to start slow with the simple outs. And then as we move forward through all the different outs and ins, we will be, you know, knowing them more and we can create more complex examples. All right, so LFO tree or try and LFO SQ. Now, these ones are going to be really useful for us because we can use them to see how other things work. So the LFO tree or try is going to be a triangle and SQ is the square and this is the same LFO that you have right here in this section you can choose you know a square or you can go with the triangle well this is the output of the same triangle and the output of the same square so since these ones are outs we can use them to modulate something else with the uh, default LFO we can just modulate a few things like you know the frequency or maybe the uh, you know the uh, pulse width uh, the uh, the uh, cutoff that we have right there but right here we can just connect that out and use this to modulate other resource. That's the main point. Now I'm going to use this just to uh, modulate something that we already can do. Notice that right here it says VCF cutoff. So it's going to be this cutoff. And this is something that we can already do by using the pre-wiring that we have right here. But instead of doing it with the uh, knobs, we can do it with the patch bay. So I'm going to be connecting this to VCF cutoff and notice that this one is an in, not an out. Now I'm going to move the cutoff right here and I play. if I play something, we are going to be getting that LFO. Now if I move this rate, this is still in charge of the LFO triangle that we have right here. And it's because we are using the same, you know, the same engine. Right, it's the same LFO. The only difference is that we are connecting it through here. If I disconnect this, we just get nothing. Now let me just connect it back. So again, we are just getting the cutoff of that. And we get a triangle. We can use it with a square. Notice that if I disconnect it, we get nothing. If I want to do a square, we are just getting the square. Pretty easy stuff. So I'm going to be connecting the LFO triangle. Now there's something else right here. Now on some sense, when you connect the in, uh, you know, so when you connect something to the uh, in of, you know, whatever source uh, that controls something, you're going to be disabling the pre-wiring that you have, you know, behind the scenes. Now in this case, this is not what's going on. We are connecting the VCF cutoff indeed, but we get, you know, the LFO, but we are not disconnecting the default or the pre-wiring that we have uh, right here in this section. Now, let me just give you an example. I'm gonna be disconnecting everything, right? So if I play something, we get nothing. Now, if I go up on the VCF mod amount and make sure that this switch is on LFO, I play something and we are gonna be getting the pre-wired, wire, wired, the pre-wired LFO, right? Now, if I connect something to the VCF cutoff, just like this, and I'm not connecting this to anything, notice that I'm not interrupting the pre-wiring. This is still doing the LFO, but if if I touch it or send an instruction, we still get that LFO, but we get something else. We get a combination of whatever it's, I'm doing right here with this, with this, uh, you know, uh, in and whatever we are getting out right here. So we are getting a combination of both. Now, I still, I'm going to be connecting the LFO triangle again. So we are doing two things. We are modulating and I'm going to change it to a pulse. We are modulating the uh, within LFO, the cutoff with this one, with the square. But in this one, we are providing a different instruction. We are saying we want to modulate this with a, you know, with a triangle. What happens if I play something? That is that we get something that sounds a little bit funny. And I'm going to be going all the way down on the VCF mod mount. If I go all the way down, this one is regulated 
leaving the square, the pulse. So we just get the triangle. But as I go up, we are doing more of the square. We are getting a combination between the, the triangle and the square. If I disconnect it, you're going to see that sounds really different. And if I connect it back, we get, we get that. Now with this, let me just disconnect everything. With this, I'm trying to say that you can connect something to the cutoff, like, you know, the LFO triangle or the LFO square, or maybe a different synthesizer or maybe a different instruction, and you can still get a combination of different sources. Now, I'm showing you all of this because uh, a lot of the patching that we do right here uh, is available through the main panel. And that's why you need to know the main panels. So when you use the patch points, you can create this combination and get the most out of the synthesizer. For example, let me just give you a different, a different example. I'm going to be using the triangle, right? So I'm going to go to the triangle and I'm going to go to the cutoff. So I'm going to be getting that. And for now, I'm just going to go VCF mod all the way down. And if I play it, you know, we get that modulation with the cutoff and the triangle. We know this. But by default, if you use the LFO with the pre-wiring, we can only do a triangle or we only can do a pulse. But if I want to use it for something else, I cannot unlock to a triangle, right? If we were using the pre-wiring. Now we have it free because the patch, uh, the patching, it's taking care of that triangle to the LFO. And now maybe I can use the frequency to mo modulate the frequency can see with a triangle, I'm sorry, with the square instead of the, instead of a triangle. So now you're using a triangle right here and then right here on the frequency you're using a square, which is something that you couldn't do or you cannot do with the panel. You can only do through the patch points. Okay, so right now I'm going a little bit slow and I'm going to be going faster as we move on through the sections. And I'm, gonna, I'm going slow because we are starting. But this is going to be like this. We're going to go one by one. I'm going to tell you what they do and then we're going to create a couple of examples. And you're going to notice that, uh, you know, learning all the ins and the outs, it's not a difficult, a difficult thing. We just covered three. So in a couple of sections or minutes, you're going to be covering like 15. It's like, you know, 40% of the, of, the, uh, of the panel, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next ones. Okay, so VCF cutoff and then the VCF resonance. We already know how the VCF cutoff works. We just learned it on the previous section. And uh, what we do right here, we just receive whatever, you know, CV to modulate the cutoff or the resonance. Now, we know we can modulate the cutoff with the panel, but, you know, the resonance is something that we cannot modulate. So I'm going to be maybe doing something like that. I'm going to be adding a little bit of resonance and I'm going to be using the LFO outs or whatever out in this case. And I'm just going to be going to the resonance right here. And as soon as we do so, we are just going to be getting or able be being able to control with the LFO. Now, like we did before, I can go to LFO and have two sources, like a square right here. Maybe we can go to a square. And now we are doing the square to the LFO and the resonance is being moved by a triangle. Right, it's a really cool sound. Now, one thing that you, I want you to notice is that I'm going to disconnect this. That when we use this knob, we decide how the LFO, how strong the modulation is. In this case, with the cutoff, right? We start, we do just a tiny little bit. And if I keep going up, it's going to be more aggressive and more aggressive and, you know, and so on. Now, if I do it with the uh, LFO outs that we have right here, and for now, I'm just going to go to the cutoff. We have no control over this. It's going to be like, you know, 100 all the way in, right? So we cannot really control when we connect uh, this, uh, you know, an LFO stride to the VCF cutoff or the resonance. So we have no attenuator to control it for us. Now, it would be really cool to control it uh, to create a better blend. And uh, we can. We have the VC mix. Now, this is one of the most important controls you have right here. So let's talk about the VC mix. All right. So VC mix, by default, it's not connecting to edit anything. And this one will output from zero to five-ish uh, volts. 
You can validate this with a multimeter. Maybe I'm going to show you how to do that later. Now, the second thing is that this one has uh, mainly two uses. You can use it as an AB type of mix, or you can use it as an attenuator. And that's why right here it says low, or it says high, or it says mix one, or it says mix two. Now, if you try to find this on the patch bay, it's going to be right here. Notice it says mix one, then mix two, and then we have this VC mix control. We're going to talk about that later. And then we have have this this out so we have two ins a one and a two and we have one out for the vc mix so if we go to the left side we're going to be standing on mix one which is this in and then if we go mix two we're going to be standing on this one so with this one again we can connect something right here because they are inputs and then it's uh, depending on what we are doing right here it's going to be outputting something and we can use that uh, that something that we are outputting to you know uh, modulate something or to do you know something else i have a v uh, an lfo triangle i'm going to be using it so i'm going to connect something to the lfo triangle out and this one is going to go to the uh, mix one the other source that we have is a square so i'm going to be connecting this to the mix number two so on the one, we have the triangle and on the two, we have the square. So now uh, the mix is receiving two sources, two different sources. So now what we can do, we need to connect something uh, to the VC mix out. And then we need to plug this and use that instruction on, you know, some other place. So in this case, I'm going to be using the cutoff and make sure that you are not using this knob. You're just all this, this knob is all the way down. And I'm going to be connecting this to the cutoff. No. So. Now we have two sources. We have the triangle, we have the square, and all of this is going out to the VCF cutoff. So if I play something, notice that we are getting something. If I go to the left side, and I'm going to go slower so we can hear this. Maybe less resonance. Eh, you know, maybe there. Okay. So we can see that this is a triangle. What happens if I start going to the other side? Little by little, the instruction is going to change. And notice that now we are standing on a square. So this is what the VC mix is going to do in this case. It's going to go to A or B or low or high. And the high is going to be the square that we have on mix 2. And the other one is going to be the triangle. So right here we can use this again to create a blend or use an attenuator just like this one. Now this one, it's a little bit different, but you know. So triangle or square. It depends on what we connect right here on the ins and outs. So this is the first application or use of the VC mix. You can choose one source, which is the one, or go all the way to the other source to do whatever it is that you want to do. Now, the other use of this is to use it as an attenuator. And when I say attenuator, we could use it like, the, like this knob. This knob is an attenuator. If I go all the way down, we are not going to be using maybe the LFO, or the LFO to do the VCF amount if you're, you know, you're there. But as soon as we go up, it's going to bring or just give us more intensity or just to, to do the modulation. Well, this is the same thing. So I'm going to be disconnecting this, this, I'm just going to disconnect everything. What we want to do, we want to control with the VC mix, the intensity of the modulation, which is something that we were not able to do before. If I connect the tri LFO triangle is one of the problems that we had. If I connect the triangle directly to the VCF cutoff, we have no, you know, uh, no say on the intensity. But now we do with the VC mix. If I connect it to the mix one or, you know, we can go even to the mix two if we wanted to. It's going to make a little bit more sense with this one. I'm going to go uh, the try to the mix two and then we go out uh you know from the bc mix to the cutoff and now we can use this knob as an attenuator i'm gonna go all the way down and gonna play a key that is that we get no modulation but now I, if i go up we are getting closer to the two remember we are connected to the number two and so we we get closer we get more 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 as we get closer we can go all the way up but we can again use it as an attenuator just like this knob now if i go to the one to the mix number one it's the same thing but backwards if i play it going to the left side it's going to be like all the way in but going to the right side it's going to be it's going to be less but it's notice that it's a little bit different all right so these are the main two applications of this. Now you can do it uh, with the square if you wanted to. Let's just do it. Why not? If I go all the way down, we get nothing. And if I go up, you know, we get that square. But maybe 
Also, what I want, I want to use another foe as a modulation source and use it with this one. And this one is going to be doing a square, which is, you know, maybe, maybe a triangle, because right here we are doing a square. And we can choose the intensity of this one, and now we can choose, or we can decide how much the, the, the intensity for the square, and this one is going to be the triangle. And you can even use it as a performance tool. All right. So that's it. You know, that's the VC mix is one of the most, uh, you know, useful tools on the whole synth. All right. So the VCO one volt per octave and then VCO Lin FM. And we can find them right here is this one. And it's going to be this one. Now, the first it says one volt per octave and it says VCO. So we know it's talking about the oscillators that we have, the oscillator that we have right here. So what we do with this one, we can modulate a one volt per octave. So we're going to be going up and down or maybe up or maybe down, depends on, you know, the instruction and in the one volt is going to be an octave. So if I trust, if I, you know, use my trusty LFO triangle and I connect the other point to VCO one volt per octave, we are going to be getting that. So we're going to get something crazy. Now, if you think about this, this makes sense. Now, the LFO is going to output from minus five to plus five uh, volts. So, and it's one volt per octave. So it's going to go really crazy up and really crazy down because again, we are going five up and then five down, five up and then five down. Now, this might not be super useful because it's a little bit too aggressive, right? So, well, then we can use uh, an attenuator just like we used before. So I can uh, disconnect this and instead of using the triangle directly to the VCO, I'm going to go LFO triangle and I'm going to use the mix too, right? The VC mix. And then the out is going to go to the, of the VC mix is going to go to the one volt per octave. I'm going to connect it right here. And for now, I'm just going to start all the way down. If I play something, we get nothing. If we slowly go up, we're going to see and hear that we slowly get that vibrato. That's the main point. You can go all the way up aggressive, but we already have that when we connect it directly. So now you can control it with this one. But this is what the, the one volt per octave means. You're just modulating this knob, the frequency. But that, you know, it's what the one volt per octave uh, means. You're modulating frequency. All right, so I'm going to go all the way down on the LFO rate. And now we need to discuss the VCO Lin FM. So this is about the same thing. They are about the VCO. So we can modulate something about the VCO. Now, in this case, it's going to be FM frequency modulation. So we can use whatever we want right here, even a different synthesizer. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to use the triangle and make sure that the LFO rate is all the way down. So when you do FM um, and you're trying to modulate a carrier, you know, with a modulator, maybe with different, you know, the modulator is going to be a different oscillator. Uh, you're using the same, maybe the same pitch and you can offset the ratios. It's just a different, a different thing. But this one is just has the same idea. We can modulate and frequency modulate, sorry, uh, the oscillator. Now, if you do it with something super slow, even, even if the oscillator is super, super slow, low in pitch in this case, um, it's going to give you a, a type of vibrato. And notice that this is what, the, this is what we are getting, getting. The LFO is super slow. And now we connect to the FM and it's going really slow. So we get up and up and down. And if I go up, if I go faster, we start to get faster, faster. And as you go up and at some point, it's going to be super fast. And you can start to get different tones, different timbers. I'm going to go up in octave. Notice that it sounds a little bit FM. We start to get that sound. So this is the main, you know, the main, the main thing that it does. Now the thing is that the LFO has no idea uh, with the frequency or the keys that we are playing. So sometimes, depending on which frequency or which key we play, it's going to be a tonal or it's going to be atonal. Because again, the LFO is just going on a constant rate and frequency, and it has no idea how to go up or down from the whatever rate we have right here. Right, so LFO rate in EG out and keyboard out. So on the previous section, we talked about the uh, the VCO Lin FM and how we can, you know, modulate or frequency modulate with the LFO. And we know that we have some problems 
uh, when we try to modulate with an LFO, because the LFO is constant, has no idea how to go faster or how to go slower. But still, we have some other parts of the synthesizer, like the key B out. And notice that this is an out. So the keyboard has an idea of which key we are playing. And every time we play a key, it's going to be a frequency. And a frequency is going to be a voltage. It's going to output uh, you know, a certain voltage. So the key B knows which key we are playing and it's going to output that voltage. Then on the other side, you have right here below, you know, besides the LFO triangle, the LFO rate. So this LFO rate is an in, it's going to receive an instruction, a voltage. Now by default, we can control how much we are doing with this knob, right? We are going fast or we're going slow. So this in, the LFO rate, is going to be this instruction, this control. If I go maybe all the way up, you know, it doesn't matter right here, maybe I'm going to go down. I can use this LFO rate, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to be connecting, I'm going to be playing it. That is what happens. I'm going to touch the tip. That is, it goes super fast. So it's receiving some kind of, kind of voltage, and it's altering uh, the rate of this one. So. The keyboard, like we said before, is going to output that information, but with the frequency of what we play right here. So if I go to the keyboard, now the keyboard will output a voltage, it will translate into the frequency of the LFO rate, and now the rate of the LFO is going to go slower or it's going to go faster, depending on which keys we play. If we play lower keys, it's going to be slower, but if we play higher keys, it's going to be faster. If I go to higher keys, it's going to be faster. Now remember, slow key, uh, lower keys is super slow. Now, this one, since we are modulating it right here, we still, we can go up on the rate of this one, and this is still, you know, it's gonna make it slow, or if I go up, it's gonna make it super fast. And notice how, notice how it sounds. And what we are doing is uh, just pretty much voltage modulation. Now, this is part of the solution uh, to the linear FM. So we can go out since we are controlling the rate and we are going faster or slower depending on what we play, right? That's what the keyboard does. So now we can maybe use a triangle as a you know modulation source, as a waveform, and then go to the FM. And now the triangle, every time that we play, the rate is going to change because we are playing a keyboard and that's, that's going to be changing that rate. So if I maybe stand on this one, uh, I'm going to be playing slow. And notice that it's a little bit different than before. When we don't use this one, it's a little bit less controllable. Now it's just a little bit more musical. But now, if I move the LFO rate, I'm changing the rate. This is still, you know, it's modulating with the keyboard and then controlling how much of the FM. But this, since we alter, we are going to be getting through different... <laughs> different timbres, right? It's just a different, a different thing. Alright, so let me just disconnect this and give you a different example. If I go down, make sure that you have no modulation. So when we play a key, we just get, you know, a dumb oscillator. So now we know that this controls the rate. And remember that we can use the VC mix if we wanted to, just to control it. And it's kind of a dumb example. We can already control it from here, right? So if I go to the VC mix and I play this, so now if I go up, I want you to look at the light. I'm going to go up on the VC mix. Notice it's going faster. I mean the LFO rate. So you can use it as a secondary control, you know, to alter the LFO rate. Now if I do something... Something like that. Now, if I do something, this one is on. We are doing some amount of modulation. While we are playing, we can just go... to different rates use it again as a performance tool. So okay, we can control the rate of the LFO, we know that. Uh, we can do it with the keyboard, we just did it. We can use it with the VC mix, we just did it. The only, the, the only, the other way, way that we have right here is going to be the one that says right here EG. This one, it's envelope generator and it's talking about this envelope. Since we can use the keyboard to, you know, output some kind of voltage, we can use different sources we can use the main envelope generator. So let's say I want to use the, um, you know, the envelope that we have right here to modulate the rate, right? We can, we can do something like that. So I'm going to be going out from the EG. This one is going to output some voltage and then the LFO rate is going to receive it. 
and then, you know, it's gonna go faster and then slower when it, when it goes down. If I play it, notice it's going super fast. Right now it's just super slow. If I go fast, it's just super fast because it's going all the way in on the envelope. Now, if I do a slow attack and maybe no sustain and a slow decay, that is, it goes slowly, it goes, it goes faster. And then at some point, it's just going to decay and goes back to super slow. Maybe you can sustain it and go up really slow. Full amplitude of the envelope. I'm going to release it in 3, 2, 1. And it's going to slowly go down. Now, we can use this on whatever we want. We can even use this on the uh, Linear FM. And, then, and that, that's what you're going to be getting. And I'm going to disable the EG and maybe go all the way down. And if I play it, it's going to go up in pitch with the LFO. But it's a different way. If I use the one volt per octave, it's going to be really aggressive. And one of the things that we can notice right here, maybe I'm going to go up on the, on the, on the cutoff. When I play it, that is going really up in pitch. It's really hard. So, how can we control the intensity of the EG? And the answer is VC mix, right? So we can use it as an attenuator. We can, instead of going directly, we can go through the VC mix and then from the VC mix to whatever it is that we want to do. So I'm going to be maybe going out of the EG and I'm going to go out uh, into the mix number two of the VC mix. And then from the VC mix out, I'm going to be going to, I don't know, whatever. I'm going to go to LFO rate. So I'm going to be using an LFO to modulate the cutoff. I'm going to go all the way down on the VC mix and doing some amount of modulation with the LFO. And if I play it, remember the VC mix is all the way down. So we are using the envelope to go faster, go slower, but now we are not doing anything. If I go up on the VC mix, we start to get something. If you wanted to, to make it less intense, notice that it's just a lot less intense. All right, so again, you can attenuate whatever is that you want through the VC mix is a very important control. Right, so geek alert, I'm going to be showing you something uh, with a multimeter, how to measure the amount of voltage that goes out uh, of your, you know, your outputs. If you don't know what a multimeter is, it's uh, something like this, and you can get it from whatever store, right? So I'm going to maybe leave it right there. So with this one, you can measure your outputs, and notice you have a, rec a red one and you have a black one. So the black is connected to COM and the other one to the other one. So uh, this one has something like this, but maybe you can get uh, some clamps and it's going to be, and the clamps are going to be looking something like this. I don't get it in my country, so I have to build it myself. I don't know why, 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 why I don't get this in my country. It's something very so silly. So what I'm going to be doing, because it's going to be a little bit easier, I'm going to be connecting this. Let me just focus on the camera. This to the black one and the other one and the other one is going to be going to the red one. So now on the multimeter, you need to stand on the one that has this symbol. And then to control, to, to measure it, you need to stand on at least 20. So now we can measure the voltage that comes out. So for example, I'm going to be, I'm going to be just putting it right here. So I can use, uh, maybe I can check, you know, how much the VC mix is going to be outputting. So I'm going to be connecting it to the VC mix. And now remember, we have the black and we have the red. So the red one is going to go to the tip. So there we go. And the black one is going to go to the sleeve. I guess, I guess in English it's called, it's called sleeve. Now, since this one is connected, I can move this knob and see how much this is outputting in terms of voltage. And it's telling me th there, you know, dude, um, you're at 50% on the VC mix and you're doing almost 2.65, uh, you know, volts. And if I go all the way to up, we can confirm that this control is outputting 5 volts, 5 and change. And you can check whatever you want, you know, by, by doing this. So the camera is not uh, getting this. It's a little bit blurred because I want you to watch this. So I'm going to be connecting uh, to the key B out, right? We already discussed this one. So now when we play the keyboards, remember the key, the keys will output an amount of voltage, right? So we can just measure or see what is the voltage for this, or maybe what's the voltage for this key and so on and so on and so on. So this is going to let you know how much you're doing. And if I go down to lower octaves, 
is gonna let us know how much voltage goes out. All right, so uh, you can use the multimeter for a lot of different things. You have very useful tools in the market, but this is something cheap that you can get anywhere, pretty much anywhere. And you can use it to know how much voltage or maybe just test the outs if they are out outputting the correct voltage. If you take a look at this to the synthesizer, where can you find VCO mod? You can find it right here, VCO mod. And then you have it right here, it's gonna be VCO mod, that, that's the in. So we already know what this one can do. If I uh, maybe play something, this is the amount of modulation to the VCO that we are doing. We can modulate the pulse width or the frequency. With what? With an EG? Or we can use an LFO just to do it. But when we stand on the EG, we can use it with the uh, envelope generator. That's the modulation source. Now, in this case, the other side, it says VCO mod. So this is going to be the control. This is going to be the in. So we can connect whatever other thing. And when we are standing on this position, that other thing that we connect right here is going to be doing the modulation to either the pulse width or the frequency. Now, we already know a little bit how the cutoff works. Remember that when we connect something to the cutoff, we are just providing an instruction and whatever instruction we do right here is gonna blend with the LFO and just, you know, we can get a blend. This is this one is just not like this. If I'm playing something, uh, let me just do it like this. Notice that the EG is modulating the frequency. If I go up on the attack, you can clearly hear that it's just modulating the frequency. Now, as soon as I connect it to the VCO mod, I'm going to be disconnecting, uh, disconnecting whatever we have we uh, uh, right here, which in this case is going to be the EEG. If I play it now, notice that we have no modulation. So if we patch something in and we leave it disconnected, it's going to disconnect whatever you have here. So now we need to connect it to some somewhere. somewhere. Now, instead of connecting directly, because we could, you know, just maybe, I don't know, go to the LFO, which is something that we can already do right here, you know? And we are going to be getting it. Or if you want to connect it to the EG, we can go to the EG. And we are going to be getting the same thing that we have right here. But maybe we just can use a combination of just different things. Let's say I want to use the square. So I'm going to go from the square and I'm going to use the VC mix as a controller. So I'm going to use the number two. And then I'm gonna be using the EG out uh, and I'm gonna go to the number one. Now, for, and now from the VC mix, I'm gonna be going out and we are gonna be going to the VCO mod. Now we are doing, instead of doing one single thing, LFO or EG, we can just make a combination of the LFO and the EG. Now I'm gonna be doing attack 50% and decay 50% and the sustain, I'm gonna leave it on. So now if I play it, what is that we get the LFO? And that's fine, but also, notice that we are going up in frequency. Maybe gonna go more decay. And if I go to the left side, remember it's going to be the EG, so we just get the EG. If I go to the right side, we have the LFO, and we just get the LFO. But as we get closer to the EG and the LFO, remember that we are gonna be getting both. EG and LFO. It's the combination of both. Now, let me just remove everything. Uh, this is a dumb example, but you know, this is what you can do. You, whatever you connect right here is going to replace the EG as a source when you have the switch all the way up. Right, so let's talk about the external audio in VCO pulls out and the saw out. So right here you get your external audio in, and then right here you see it says VCO so, saw, this is an out, and then the pulse right here. Now behind the scenes, the oscillator is outputting a square, a pulse, or is uh, outputting a saw, and the waveform, you know, the oscillator, it's constantly running behind the scenes. So this is gonna go right there. Whatever we connect right here, maybe if I connect a cable, let me just do it. If I uh, do VCO saw, whatever we have on this end is going to be the saw. That's gonna be that waveform. Same thing for the pulse. Maybe I can connect this to the external audio in of a different synthesizer and whatever other synthesizer is gonna be outputting this oscillator. That's, you know, the main idea. Now let's just go back. No, notice that we have a mix right here. And if we go to the mix, it says VCO and then it says noise, but it's, it also says, it says external. Now if I play a key and I go all the way to the left, it's doing a square in this case. If I go up, we can start to get noise and at some point we just get noise. Now right here you have your noise out. 
so you can get the noise out of the, you know, the outs. But it also says external, so whatever we connect to the external audio is going to be that external. Now, the most common example is going to be getting the, the uh, two waveforms that this can output. So if I stand right there on a pulse, maybe I'm going to be connecting the saw right here, just going to connect it and then go to the external audio. Now, if I play it and I'm all the way down, we are just getting a saw. But as I go up, we are going to start getting a blend of the saw and the square. Right? Now we are all the way on the saw. And if I stand on 50%, again, we get a blend between the saw and the and the pulse, the, the square. Right? So that's, this is the most common example. And of course, we are removing the noise out of the equation. Right? We get just no noise. Now, what if you want to keep the noise, you want to keep the saw and you want to keep the square? So we can do this because you have your noise out, you have your saw and your pulse, you can do the external in, and then we have the utility of, you know, the VC mix, and then we have the malt. We're going to talk about this in a minute. So if you think about this, again, we want to do the three things uh, kind of uh, at the same time. So what we can do, we can create a blend of the noise and some of the waveforms, the saw or the, or the pulse, then go through the VC mix and we can control the blend of those right here. And then we can go out of the VC mix, go out to the external audio in, and then we can control the blend of that right here. You know what, let's, let's just do it. I'm going to be doing a saw. Since we are using a pulse right here, I'm going to do a saw. So the saw is going to go to the mix number one. We also want the noise. So the noise, we're going to get the out of the noise and we're going to go to the mix number two. And then we want to go out from the VC mix to where, well, we're going to go to the external audio signal in. Now, if I go all the way to the right side, we are going to be getting whatever that comes out of the VC mix. So if I play it, we get a combination of noise and the saw and this controls the blend between the saw and the noise. So maybe we can do a little bit of noise, but mostly saw. And now on this one, we can control how much of the pulse and the noise with the saw that we get. All right, so all of this ins and outs, it's something that you can use with the other synthesizers. Right now, every example I'm just creating, it's with what we have available. Uh, but you can, you know, maybe if you get the Silver Harmonicon or the DFAM, just, you know, using all of this ins and outs, it's just going to make, uh, you know, a little bit more sense. So if I'm uh, connecting a different uh, oscillator or something else uh, to the external side audio in of a different synthesizer, you're going to start getting, you know, different uh, sounds, different blends. Maybe you can get an octave down of the other oscillator from the other synthesizer and just get it out on this one. Okay, so let's move on to the mix CV and the VC mix control. Now, uh, this is a little bit confusing because they just, you know, uh, pretty much use the same name, right? It's just a little bit confusing, but it's really simple. Uh, if you go over there, this is an in and it says mix CV. And if you go all the way down here, it says VC mix control. So this one is going to be this mix is the in for and the control for this mix. And the other one, this one is going to be the control for this one. And they are both inputs. They're going to receive voltage. All right, so let's just create an example. So uh, let's say that I'm standing, you know, right here and I get a, I have a saw. And again, if you go to the other side, we just get noise. We, we already know that. So what I want to do, I want to modulate this control and do something like that. So we could do it with an LFO. So what we could do, we could take the LFO that outputs that voltage that we want and we just can plug it in to the mix CV. This is going to modulate this knob and do that, you know, LFO. So if I plug it in, we get it and it's being controlled by the LFO. So if I go up, we just get it. Or maybe we can just use an envelope like the EG that we have right here at the bottom. If I go to the EG and connect it, now it's going to be going up and then going down following whatever envelope. So if I do a slow attack and a slow decay, notice that it starts, maybe it's going to go slower. It starts with the, uh, the square and then it goes to noise and when I release, it goes back to the square. Maybe I'm going to go a slower. Right? 
So yeah, we can we can just control this uh, knob and just make it just modulate it in some fashion. Now, uh, one thing that you might notice uh, when we are using the EG is that it's just maybe a little bit too aggressive. So again, if we think about this, how you know what we can use? Can, what can we use to control it? So we can use the VC mix. So I'm gonna take that envelope, the crazy envelope, and I'm gonna go to the mix two. And then from there, the VC mix is going to go to the mix CV and we are going to be able to control it a little bit better. If I go all the way down in the VC mix, we just get what we have right here. Now I'm going to go to the square. So we are just getting nothing. If I go up on the VC mix, now we start to get the noise. So now in th this one, instead of going all the way up and all the way down, it's just doing a little bit. I'm just going to keep it right there. And I release it. Is going to decay more to the pulse. We have the VC mix control. What's the point on this? It works the same way than the mix CV, but the only difference is that it's going to be controlling this one. So maybe we want, we want to do that LFO right here on this knob. All right, so let's just create the same example than before. I want the saw and the noise on the on the on the right side, on the external in, and then the right side on the left side. I want the pulse, right? It's just the same example we did before. So I'm gonna go to saw, and the saw is gonna go to the mix in number one, of course. And then we want to take noise, and the noise is gonna go to the mix number two. And then from the uh, VC mix out, we are gonna be going to the external audio in. And just like we did before, if we put it right there, we can decide if we want more noise or if we want more pulse. I'm sorry, saw. All right. But what I want to do, I want to do something like this. All right, so I want to modulate the VC mix. And it's just like we did before, we can do it with the LFO. So let me just grab a new cable. And I'm gonna be using the out of, you know, you can use the triangle or you can use the pulse or you can use, you know, whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna use the triangle out and I'm gonna enter to the VC mix control. You don't see it because, you know, we have the, the cables right there. So now I'm gonna be getting the triangle, that LFO to modulate this control. You can go faster and adjust how much we want from this. All right, so all of this is just completely up to you. More saw and noise and more square, all right. Okay, so let's talk about the mold in and the mold outs. And you have it right there, mold. And then notice that you have one in and then you have one out and then you have one out. This is very simple. This is a mult because it's a multiple or just duplicator of whatever signal. Now notice that you get one uh, single lonely in, but you get two outs. So what this does is going to take whatever in and it's going to duplicate it so you can use it on multiple places. So let's let me just let me just give you an example. Let's say that I want that uh, an envelope, you know, whatever envelope that we can uh, have right there, uh, to modulate something. Maybe I'm going to be using the EEG and I'm going to be using it. Uh, through the v the VC mix, I'm gonna go to the mix number two, so we can use it as an attenuator. We know this trick, and then from the VC mix out, I'm gonna be maybe going to the mix CV. I want to modulate this one. Now let me just maybe I'm gonna put it right there. So now if I play a key, the envelope should be attack 50%. I'm gonna go 50% on pretty much everything. The VC mix. It's gonna go up on the mix, and this one, and when I release it, it's gonna go down, maybe I'm gonna do more decay. It's gonna go down to back to the square, right? So this is, we already, we already know how this works. Maybe I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna start a square, it's gonna go up towards the, uh, the noise, and then when we release, it's gonna go back to the square. Well, again, we already know how this works. So what's the problem right here? We are using the EG to do something, right? Can we use it on a different place? No, we cannot, because we are already connecting something to that out, and we cannot use it or use it in a different place. You, nowadays, you have special cables that you can use, but we cannot from directly from here with a lonely cable. But you can, uh, you have the malt. So if I'm using an EG and I connect it to the malt, I'm connecting this to the end of the malt. 
So now this EG is going to be duplicated. I can get it. I can get the same modulation instruction from the Malt 1 and then I can connect it on a different place from the Malt 2. So I can use the EG on two different places. Now, before we do that, I'm going to give you an example, but I'm going to disconnect this because remember that the instruction of the EG sometimes is a little bit too aggressive. So sometimes it's a little bit better by going through the VC mix. And that's, you know, I'm going to give you the full example right here. So I will use the envelope out in this case. We're going to take the envelope and I'm going to be going to the mix number two. And I'm just using it as an attenuator, right? So now the VC mix needs to go someplace because you're using the EEG, right? So we can go directly, but again, we want to use the EEG with the attenuator on two different places. So instead of going directly, we are going to be taking it to the malt. So now we have that EG being attenuated and we can use it for two different destinations. So we can do the same thing that before. I'm going to take the malt out and we can go to the mix CV so we can do the same thing that we were just doing. And now the malt number two can go to a different place. And so we can really hear it. I'm going to be going to the LFO rate. So with the same EG, we are going to the mix CV and we are going to the LFO rate and we are controlling it with the attenuator of the VC mix. So if I play something, nothing is going to happen. I'm going to go to the LFO because again, we are just uh, modulating the rate. I'm going to be doing some amount and we get it. Now, if I go to the VC mix and I go up, that is that we get it and I'm going to go really slow on the envelopes and do about, you know, about there. That is that we get it. I'm going to be going a little bit aggressive. So if you take a look at this oscilloscope, when we play it, it's going to go slow and we also see the noise on the waveform. Maybe I'm going to make it louder so you can see it. All right, so, so we can see the shape going from square to noise. It goes slowly with the attack, and when I release the key, it's going to slowly decrease. So we are using the EG for the rate and the mix. All right, so nowadays you have special cables that are really useful, and I'm not using them because sometimes uh, it's hard. They're hard to get. Depends on your country, you know, where you live. But you have some special cables where you can connect one single cable and you get multiple outs of that, you know, uh, that out or in, in this case, out. And that you can use multiple cables on different places. But it's something that you need to buy because it's a special cable. And if you want to know how it calls, it's going to be uh, one is it's a cable that has uh, two outs and it's from Tip Top. That's, uh, that's the name of the company, Tip Top Audio. And the other one, it's called Split split and it has six outs which is you know crazy and i guess the company it's a swiss sonic or something like that i'm gonna maybe give you the links at the description just check the check the description now if you go to thomans you know uh you're gonna be getting uh tip top tip top audio you're gonna get that cable if you search it and if you type swiss uh, swiss sonic uh split you're gonna be getting that device where you have multiple outs okay so gate out and it's gonna be this one right here so notice that we covered pretty much like 60% or, or more of all the ins and outs. So you got this. All right, so the gate out, if you don't know what the gate is, is an instruction. So when you play a keyboard, uh, this, will, this gate will open. And as soon as you release the keys, the gate will close. So if I play a key, the gate opens. And when I release it, it's going to close. That's how, you know, it's just letting the, the audio pass. And when I release, it's going to close it. So when we play a key in this case, this instruction of opening and closing, and it's a hard uh, open and hard close, just like a pulse, right? This gate uh, instruction is going to be outputted right here. And this is something that you could use on different synthesizers to, uh, you know, to uh, open the gates and close the gates, especially when you're using the sequencer. But, you know, you can use it right here. If I go to gate, I'm going to maybe go all the way down in the cutoff. We already know that we can do this with this control, but I'm just, again, giving you an example. If I play a key, nothing happens because it's super dark. Now, when I go to the VCF cutoff, remember what the gate does. It's going to say open and then it's going to say close. So when I play a key, it's opening and when I release it, it's closing. So it's moving the cutoff, the cutoff up with voltage and then hard closing it. If I play it, we get it. And if I release it, it closes. So this is what the gate does, and it's a pretty common 
thing that you get on, you know, a lot of synthesizers. And again, this instruction is really important because if you pair uh, this synth with other synths, uh, this will provide the instruction of when something is opening and when something is uh, it's closing, especially when you are working with the envelopes. And the envelopes takes us to the next topic, which is going to be the other gate. All right, so when the sound comes out of the synthesizer, or we are using a filter modulation or something that needs uh, needs an envelope uh, to start doing its job, it will usually trigger an envelope. Now, the envelope is going to be triggered by something. Now, this is something that tells the envelope, I'm going to you know, make a little bit of cut off, uh, that this something that tells the envelope to start doing its job is going to be usually uh, a trigger or a gate, could be whatever, you know, depending on, depending on the synthesizer. So if I play a key, this, what it's doing, it's telling the envelope to open and close, to start doing its job. That's why when you go to VC of uh, amount and we use the EG as a modulation source, this is possible, right? When I play a key, it's letting, and I'm gonna go to VCA mode on. I'm triggering the envelope when I play a key. And as soon as I play it, it's telling, dude, do your job and modulate the cutoff. And when I release it, stop doing your job. So the rounded gate that we have right here is an in. So uh, we can use this to tell the synthesizer when to open or to trigger the envelope that we have right here. So I'm going to go attack all the way down and maybe decay all the way up. So remember how this synth works in terms of volume. If I play a key, it's using this envelope to go out, out in volume. I'm going to go up on the cutoff and then it closes. The sustain, it's not on. So if I uh, plug in something to this gate, I'm going to be, um, you know, this, I touched it by mistake. So this gate receives an instruction and it's going to open the gate, it's going to trigger the envelope and, you know, it's going to, you know, let the sound pass and then close. That's why when I touch it with my finger, this gate is receiving some kind of voltage. And that's why the envelope, it's opening. Right? I'm just touching it with my finger and it opens. So we can connect this to a different synthesizer and the other synthesizer is going to tell this gate when to open and when to close. Now we can still create an example. Maybe I'm going to go to a short decay and no attack and some LFO. I'm going to go to LFO square and this is going to, since there's an LFO, it outputs voltage whenever the LFO, the, the square, in this case maybe, goes to positive, is triggering the gates, opening and just closing. If we go faster, and we can go slower. Now still, when I play a key, we are just... Notice that something happens. If I make it longer, notice that I am still, the keyboard is still outputting, you know, uh, it's still trying to open the gate. And it's, again, doing it. But now we have two things, you know, trying to open the gate. All right. So let me just disconnect it, it's a little bit annoying. So in theory, this gate, the only thing that needs, it's, you know, some kind of a voltage in order to open the, uh, you know, to trigger the the, uh, the envelope. So we can even use the VC mix right here. Now the VC mix, remember what, what it does, is going to output from zero to five point something voltage. If I cross that, ver you know, that uh, amount of voltage that the gate needs to trigger, it's gonna trigger it. And notice what happens if I go from, I guess it's 2.5 and something, it's going to trigger the envelope. And all of this uh, about the gate, uh, you know, the out, the gate out and the gate in, takes us to the next topic, right? So we need to talk about this tempo. Now, the thing is that to understand this one, we need to understand how this works behind the scenes. And when I mean this, I mean the sequencer, you know, the whole device in terms of the sequencer. Uh, we have three different modes. We have the tempo CV input mode, tempo single clock advanced mode, and tempo din sync mode. So three different modes. How can we access to the three different modes? is a little bit funny. You need to go to shift, hold it. You need to go to reset, hold it. You need to go to set end, hold it, and then tap the eight. So I'm going to be doing that. 
Notice that the lights, they change right here. So this is the main configuration of the device. So you have different positions right here, the one, the two, and the three. So you can access to three different pages. The first one is gonna be the assign. So it's, it's, gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be this out, the one that we have right here. We're gonna talk about this in a minute. Now, if we, uh, we use the arrows, I go there, we are going to be standing on the number two. Now, the camera, maybe it's not showing the true colors. The first one now is green and the second one is yellow. So the second one, if it's yellow, it's because you're standing on the MIDI channel. And the one is green because the MIDI channel for the device is going to be one. Now, if you go to the next one, you have the tempo input mode. So this is where we want uh, it to be. So remember, the first one is going to be the tempo CV input mode. You have t three. So you can change which one, you know, you can decide which one you want to use uh, with the one, two, and three right here. So if I go one, we have the first one, which is, again, the tempo CV input mode. The second one is going to be the clock divide. And the other one is going to be the DIN sync. I'm going to stand on the first one, the CV input mode. Now, to get out of here, you just need to do the same thing. is shift, reset, set end, and then eight, and we are back to normal. All right, so I have a sequence right here. I'm going to be playing it. It is a very simple sequence. Now, who is going to be running or ruling the tempo of the sequence? It's going to be this knob, right? So if I go up, it's going to go faster. And if I go slower or down, uh, is gonna go slower, right? So, but this one is the one that rules the tempo. So, what happens right here when on the first mode is that we can connect something right here and kind of uh, interrupt or just, you know, blend or just uh, make a combination of whatever this tempo we have right running, we are running right here and whatever we connect right here. So, this is going to receive that voltage and kind of a combine it. So, I'm gonna be playing it. And now I'm gonna be connecting something to the tempo. Now, even if I touch the tip, notice that it's affecting how this works. It's like, like we are just with voltage, we are altering the tempo. But notice one thing that happens that the sequence never stops. And as soon as I stop touching it, it goes back to the tempo that we have right here. So this is the first mode. As soon as it receives voltage, it's gonna modify the tempo. So we can, we can even use the VC mix to output some kind of a voltage and affect the tempo of the sequence. And I'm using the VC mix. But as we go back, it will always go back and it will never stop. This is how the first mode works. And this is especially, you know, this is actually kind of good if you want to use it with other synthesizers and mess, and mess with the tempo, because it's never stopping. All right, now I can even use a pulse, a little faux square, right? So if I play it back, Notice that the LFO rate is affecting the sequence. It's not stopping it. It's stopping it right here. It's kind of a, you know, the tempo is all the way to zero. That's why it's stopping uh, maybe uh, the step seven. But it's not uh, stopping the playback of the sequence. Again, so you use this mode if you want to always keep the sequence running and use this tempo as a master tempo, let's say. And this one is called Tempo CV input mode. Now then you have the other ones, and the other ones are going to be a little bit different when you use this tempo. So I'm going to be doing shift, then reset, then set end, and then eight to access the config. And I'm going to be going to the number three. Remember the yellow, it's the number three. And now I need to decide which one I want to use. The first one is the, uh, you know, CV input. Now the second one uh, is going to be the tempo single clock advanced mode. Right, so we are using that one to get out, shift, reset, set, end, and then eight. So I'm going to be playing the sequence, and I want you to notice that the tempo light is red. Right, so it's red. Now I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to be connecting the LFO square to the tempo. And as soon as we do so, I'm going to be connecting right here. As soon as we do so, notice what happens. Still is moving. But now it's following the LFO rate. This one is kind of a disregarded. It's not using the master one anymore. And you can uh, notice it because now this one is green. So when it's green, it's mean that you're overriding the master tempo and you're using whatever else that you're connecting right here. If I go up on the LFO rate, it's just gonna be, you know, changing the tempo. And if I go down on this one, I'll go up on this one, it doesn't matter. Right? 
Okay. So with this one, you always need to be aware that whatever you connect right here, it needs to output some kind of a voltage. If I, uh, you know, go to tempo and I do VC mix right here and I do play, again, we have the tempo. This tempo is ruling the sequence and it's red. But as soon as I go up on the VC mix and we go over a voltage, the sequence is going to go to green and notice that it's not advancing, it's stopping. And it's because it's trying to use this as a, you know, as a, as a tempo, as a trigger. So if uh, at some point I go and do something like this, it's going to be receiving that tempo and notice it's advancing the steps. So it's like, again, receiving the trigger, the unnecessary voltage that it needs, and it's advancing to the next step. So this is not very useful, of course. But this is it's useful if you're just, again, connecting maybe a different source to rule the tempo and you don't want to use this one anymore. Now, when you move it, since this one is not getting any voltage, it's going to resume for from whatever tempo we have right here and it's back to red. And this is how it's letting you know that, dude, you're using an external or using the internal tempo. All right. So I'm going to disconnect here and we're going to move on to the next option, which is going to be the third one, the tempo din sync mode. Same than before, shift, reset, end, uh, sorry, reset, and then set end and then eight. So we are standing on the number three, right? So it's going to be the number three and I'm going to be doing three. So we have the three uh, page number three. And then now we have the tempo din sync mode and to get out is shift then reset, then set end, and then eight. And we are back. This mode, it's useful when you want to connect other units and then make them sync. All right, so I'm using the key step pro. I have the clock out and the clock is going to the tempo, right? So this is what it does. Now, this one is going to be on play. And as soon as, it, you know, now it's playing. If I stop it and play it from the from here, now the tempo, whatever it is, the tempo is, now this one is following this, and it is again, we have the green and we don't have the red. So, now, uh, again, if I go right here to the key step pro and I change the tempo, the mother 32 will adjust the tempo. I'm changing the tempo on the key step pro. I'm going to, you know, really fast. Now, there's a thing, one thing, I'm gonna go back to 120 bits per minute. One thing that you need to be aware is that when you're using this mode and you're syncing to the tempo, this knob is going to do something. It's going to work as a clock divider and uh, going to be going all the way up. Notice that you get yellow lights. So you're going again, you're going faster, it's dividing the clock. But as you go down, it's going to give you again, just it's going to clock divide whatever is that uh, this is going in. It's really cool. This is a very cool thing. If I keep going down, it's going to, of course, be slower because we are going to slower divisions. But as we go fast, I'm going to go back to whatever we have and just sync it to the Keystep Pro or whatever other device that you're using. All right, so that's what the tempo does. And I couldn't just, you know, tell you what this does without you providing an example for each uh, different mode. But now, you know, you know what they do. So we just can move forward. Now we still need to cover the run, stop, the reset, the hold, and some other options, but we are pretty much done. Okay, so uh, we have the run and we have the stop. And this is again, talking about the sequencer. If I run it, it's gonna run. And if I stop it, <laughs> it's gonna be stopped. So uh, this takes a certain amount of voltage to play, to start it and to stop it, that's it. So we can maybe control it with some voltage. So I'm gonna be doing a run stop and I'm gonna be going all the way down in the VC mix because remember this one will output voltage and I'm gonna be going to VC mix. Remember, I'm gonna be playing it back. Now, again, this one outputs some voltage, right? So as soon as I go down and uh, uh, output less voltage, it's going to stop it. Uh, if I go over the voltage that it needs, it's going to play it back. So I can just, you know, stop it and play and start playback with a VC mix. If I use, uh, for example, a pulse on a foe square, remember how the alpha, you know, how a pulse is. It's going to be positive all the way, just all the way up, or it's going to be negative all the way down. So when it's up, it's playing, and when it's down, it's not playing. Playing, not playing, playing, not playing. Alright, so that's what it does. 
Again, you can use this to your advantage if you're using a different synthesizer. All right, so then you have the reset and then you have the hold. Again, reset and then we have hold. And this works the same way than the run and the stop. After a certain amount of voltage, it will hold or it will reset. All right, so I'm gonna be, eh, I'm gonna be playing it and I'm gonna be doing reset. And remember that we can use the VC mix just to, just to do it. So remember, this is going to reset. So every time I go over the voltage that it needs, it's going to be going and resetting the sequence back to the step one. All right, so that's what it does. Now the hold is the same, but it's going to be holding it and instead, instead of resetting back to one. I go to hold and go over the voltage that it needs and it's just staying on the step number eight. Keep playing the sequence. Stop. And then stop it. And so on and so on. So this is what it needs. It requires some amount of voltage. Now we can use the LFO square. And it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit weird. Because again, you know, this one is a little bit slowish. So it's gonna be kind of stopping it at some point. Depends on the, uh, on the LFO on the LFO right. All right. Okay, so VCACV, and then we have something that says VCF right here. Now, the VCF, it's pretty simple, isn't out. Now, remember how the uh, the flow goes. It goes out from the oscillators, and then go, goes to the cutoff. So this, if we connect it to something right here, this is an out, we can connect some to, you know, this to something else. It's gonna be outputting whatever that comes out of the cutoff, right? So I feel like I don't need to explain it after all, <laughs> everything that we've learned. Now, then you have the VCACV. Now, where can you find VCA on this synthesizer? Right here is gonna be VCA. So it's talking about the amplifiers. It's going to be up talking. It's, it's talking about the volume. So this essentially what it does is going to be doing. If I play the sequence, is something like that. You know, we are going to be going up and down in volume. Now we can do this with you know with a tr uh, with a triangle using an LFO. We can modulate that that uh, VCACV, and if we do it, that's what happens. We are going to go up and down in volume following the LFO, just going up and down with the LFO. Now, still, we can use what we've learned. We can attenuate it. You know, we can attenuate the triangle just a little bit so we can get a tremolo type of effect. Maybe I'm going to go to, again, try LFO triangle, and then I'm going to go to mix uh, two. And then from the VC mix, I'm going to go to VCACV. And when I play it back, if I go all the way down, we get nothing. But if I go all the way aggressive, we get that tremolo. But if I go down, we just get a little bit. And again, we have this tremolo type of effect. Cool. Or maybe, you know, just since we are doing something, we can take the LFO square that we have right here and take it to the mix of uh, the mix one. And now we have a, a blend between the saw and the square. And it's gonna be a little bit different. Right? Because it's a different instruction. Uh, it's still really aggressive because we are going one way or the other one. But you know, we have something in common. Maybe we can leave it on and just maybe I'm gonna remove the square. Ah, I'm gonna remove the, uh, nope, sorry for that. Ah, I'm gonna remove the square, why not? And now we get, you know, a better effect because we don't have an envelope and the LFO is taking over and using that tremolo. Alright. Okay, so we just covered everything that we have right here. The only thing that we need to discuss now is going to be the assign. And as this says, is an assignable output. So we need to choose what the, we want this to be. And we, it can be many things. And this could be a whole different video because we have a lot of options. I'm gonna put in screen what the, the, the things that you can uh, convert this to. You can uh, use it to create accents. You can use it as a clock divider. You can use it as a, a type of a modulation with the sequencer. And I'm gonna give you an example. You can link it or maybe convert this 
to receive a CC, right? From, um, you know, different CCs or the pitch bend or just, you know, maybe take the MIDI uh, velocity or the aftertouch and use it with that. Now, the thing is, how can you access all of these values? And we do it by going to the configuration again, shift, reset, then set accent, and then the number eight. And we are, you know, back there. Now, remember the number two is the MIDI, uh, you know, the MIDI channel. Uh, so the number one, the, the one, it's in yellow, is gonna be the assign. And right there, it's just gonna let you know where you're standing. So right now I'm on five, which is the sequencer stamp, uh, step ramp. So you have 16, okay? So you can choose the first one, the second one, third, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you have the first eight. Now, how can you access, uh, access the next eight? So you go to shift, and by doing shift, it's gonna let you select the next eight, and notice that the lights go red. So I'm standing right now on the 16th option, which is gonna be the MIDI CC7. Now if I, uh, now if I go right here to the five, which is gonna be the 13, it's going to be MIDI CC1. So if I'm using MIDI, I can use the, I can use the mod wheel and uh, you know, uh, output some voltage from, from a mod wheel. You know, how cool is that? Now I'm not gonna give you an example for all of them because again, this is going to, uh, this could take a long time. I'm just gonna give you an example for some of them. Now the first one, the first option, is the default one and the default is going to be an accent i'm going to be using that one to exit here i'm going to shift reset set end and do the number eight so now whatever i connect to the assign well this is going to be an, an accent right now so i'm going to delete the sequence we have nothing and what i'm going to do i'm going to record something and on this one i'm going to be recording that step but i'm going to be doing an accent as well and every time that we hit an accent on the sequence this one is going to output some voltage so we can just connect it to some other place and you know create a modulation that's the main point i'm going to be adding some other ones i'm going to be doing a, an accent on that one on that one, I'm going to be doing an accent, and then I'm going to finish it right here. So if I play it back, notice that we get accents. So now, again, every time that we get an accent, this is going to output something. And maybe I'm going to be maybe going, I don't know, to the resonance. And notice that every time that we get an accent, the resonance is going up. All right. So that's what the assign uh, means. So let's just do another example. I'm going to go shift. Set end, uh, reset, set end, and the number eight. And I'm gonna go to the number five. So the number five is a sequencer step ramp. Now, uh, every time that it go, the sequence uh, moves, is going to give you a ramped uh, instruction. It's really, really cool. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get exit, I'm gonna exit out of here. I'm gonna do shift, I'm gonna reset, uh, reset, set end eight. And now I'm gonna reset the sequence and I'm gonna create a new one, because right now we have nothing. So I'm gonna do uh, shift, let me just disconnect this from here. I'm gonna do shift and rec, and I'm gonna record 16 steps. I'm gonna go to the next and do... All right, so something simple. I'm gonna be playing it back, and we have that. Now remember that now the assigned is going to be using the sequencer to create a ramp type of instruction. So I'm gonna go down on the cut, in the cut. -off. Now the assign is gonna output is gonna use 16 steps to modulate. Notice what's going on. As the sequence goes, it's, it's gonna be really dark on the first step, but as it moves, moves forward, is like doing this to the cutoff until we reach the step 16. Right, so that, that's what it means. Now, uh, from all the uh, options that you get, you get a saw, you get a triangle, you get a ramp. The, the one that we are using right now is a ramp. Uh, you got a random, right? So you can you can use a random if you wanted to. So I'm not going to be covering all of them because that uh, that would be crazy. So you need to do some exploring right here. All right, so we are done. So now you know all the ins and the outs of your synthesizer. How great is that? And now you know it all, right? So you know the main panel because maybe you watched the first guide, you know how to work with the sequencer and you know all this. So maybe you can bring a different synthesizer and just, you know, go at it. Okay, so if you liked all of this and you learned something on this video, uh, please like and subscribe. And um, if you have the money and you just want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links at the description. You have links for PayPal, YouTube thanks, and you have Patreon. Maybe you can be a one-month patron and buy me a coffee that way.
All right, so I'm gonna take five because I'm a little bit tired. This was way too long. So see you on the next one.